Greetings, all. Today, we will be examining the common water-type Pokémon Krabby, the River Crab Pokémon, and its relatively uncommon evolution, Kingler, the Pinsir Pokémon. As a member of the Infraorder Brachiera, Krabby and Kingler are anatomically consistent with what might expect to be found in a crab, and thus their basic anatomy is fairly easy to understand. They possess ovoid bodies with six legs, four of which are used for locomotion, while the front two pincers act as the way of attacking and defending themselves. They possess large mouths with teeth-like protrusions on the lower jaws that are used to aid in crushing and cutting up food that they eat, while their eyes are simple in structure and function much like the eyes of a normal crab would. The fact that both makes them synonymous and distinct from normal crabs are their large pincers, which are generally the same size in the case of Krabby, while one is heavily enlarged in the case of Kingler. Their exoskeletons are surprisingly sturdy despite their appearance, especially in the case of the crown-like extension of material found on the top of Kingler bodies, which benefits them in granting them shell armor as a potential base ability. As such, they can usually take quite a beating in close quarters before they are put in real danger, though it does little to help them defend themselves against special attacks. As with normal crabs, the pinches of these creatures act as their primary weapons in battle and are crucial for their survival, as the few special attacks they do learn are of little consequence due to their limited ability to use said attacks effectively. These pinchers serve two primary purposes. For one thing, because Krabby and Kingler walk sideways to keep their lateral profile as wide as possible for guarding and intimidation, they need their pinches in order to balance themselves and keep their otherwise thin legs grounded, as they can easily be tipped over otherwise. If either one of these pinches is lost, they will lose their balance when they try to walk and will be unable to move properly. This can definitely be a problem for Krabby in particular, as the joints that connect their pincers to their body are relatively weak, so it doesn't take a great deal of force to break them off. Thankfully, they can be regrown completely within 24 hours, and they usually come out stronger and more durable each time this happens. In addition to this, as one might have initially guessed, these pincers are used for fighting and defense, and these crabs are not to be trifled with, as even Krabby have a deceptive amount of power to them. What really benefits these creatures is that their pincers are designed to scrape edges with one another every time they open and close, self-sharpening to ensure attacks like Vice Grip and Metal Claw always strike at maximum power, and in turn granting them access to Hyper Cutter as a base ability. Moreover, when combined with their incredible brute strength, it can also grant them the Sheer Force ability as a hidden ability. Krabby and McKinkler, however, are particularly notorious for their devastating Crab Hammer attack, as it is said to be the strongest in the world and capable of breaking through just about anything, even the otherwise impenetrable shells of Pokémon like Cloyster. This kind of power and their decent stamina is reflected in their stats as well, as in looking at Kingler in particular, while their base HP, special attack, and special defense stats are below average for fully evolved water type Pokémon, their base speed stat is slightly above average, their base defense stat is noticeably above average, and their base attack stat is very, very much above average. In fact, they have some of the strongest physical offenses out of all Water-type Pokémon, only being outdone by school-form Wishy-Washy. As such, while they might not be able to do much against special offenses, they can still more than pummel their opposition into submission when in close quarters. While both Krabby and Kingler can live in fresh and salt water equally, Krabby generally prefer the former and usually make their homes along beaches and silty riverbanks, diligently making burrows in the fine-grade substrate deep enough that they can keep their surroundings relatively moist. They predominantly feed on insects and microorganisms for sustenance and prefer to avoid humans so they do not have to tangle with us, though they are territorial and will viciously attack anything that gets too close to their burrow. Their tenacious nature is shown towards others of their own kind as well, for if food resources are quite scarce, they will become even more territorial than normal and will fight amongst each other in order to scrape out a living as much as they can. In desperate situations, these creatures can get the vital nutrients they need to survive by swallowing mouthfuls of sand, but it is not easy to process and it can wreak havoc on their digestion system if done one too many times. If they are threatened, these creatures will generally spray a stream of bubbles around their bodies in order to cover them up and make them look bigger, in the hopes of intimidating potential predators into leaving them alone. Krabby are generally farmed for their delicious meat by humans, especially the meat in their claws, which is said to taste the sweetest, but they must be prepared carefully. They tend to spoil quite quickly once they are dead, and trying to boil them alive tends to cause problems if their pinchers cannot be removed before cooking, resulting in the injury of one too many chefs over the years. While trying to capture Krabby for use as food might be a relatively manageable task, trying to do so with their evolved form Kingler is generally an unwise decision. 
Unlike Krabby, these creatures are not symmetrical in body form, as the left pinchers are grossly oversized compared to the right one. And while it can make them a serious threat, it also causes its own problems for these creatures. On the positive side of things, this massive pincher is incredibly powerful and sturdy, and can strike with 10,000 horsepower at maximum strength, completely obliterating all but the sturdiest of objects with just a few swings of this massive pincher. Plus, its large size enables these creatures to gain access to the wide guard technique after evolving. On the same note, it serves a further and its true primary purpose in allowing these creatures to communicate across long distances, moving the large pincer around in order to send messages to other Krabby and Kingler to avoid causing problems, as Kingler tend to become somewhat nervous and volatile when placed in crowded environments. However, despite the power they possess, Kingler are at a disadvantage because the massive size and weight of the pincer makes it incredibly unwieldy and difficult to use, forcing them to take frequent rest breaks when using it to communicate with others, only being able to constantly use it for 20 minutes at a time, despite some conversations lasting as much as 5 hours. Moreover, this can make it difficult for them to repeatedly swing their primary weapon in battle if they can't get close to the target, and may even tip them over if they swing too hard in one direction. So caution is needed in directing them to attack in battle, lest their biggest asset end up becoming their biggest weakness. While they might not be the most useful of water-type Pokémon in many cases, Krabby and Kingler are interesting creatures that can definitely make their presence known in close quarters combat where they are at the top of their game. Their limited move variety and issue with handling special offenses can hold them back significantly, but as long as one keeps this in mind and only uses them in the right cases, training and working with these massive crustaceans can be made a fairly easy chore. Just do your best not to anger them if you find yourself in a difficult situation with them. Krabby might not be able to do much more than give you a nasty pinch, but aggravate a Kingler? and it will gladly kneecap you and proceed to crab hammer you into the ground like you were nothing more than a wooden post. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching and I wish you well.